everyone, I'm Allie with Potomac Deeds. And in this episode of Better Beater, we are talking craft show displays. So I know a lot of you set up at shows and you're always looking for ideas, suggestions, or ways to get started in doing so. So I actually pulled a bunch of our group members in our Facebook group for beading and jewelry making and asked them to submit pictures of their craft show displays. Now, these pictures came flooding in and they were great and so phenomenal to use. And I know there were more that keep flooding in and keep coming in. Uh, so thank you for those of you that checked that out. If you do want to see the rest of the displays or you want to be helpful and post your display to give ideas and suggestions, make sure to go to our Facebook page and for beading and jewelry making, check out that group and you can post there on the question and the link that I had. So a huge thank you for those that did this. The one thing that I want to talk about before I even talk about displays and before we look at some of these different photos are basically what are the essential things that you don't think about that you want to make Make sure that you bring to the shows. Keep in mind you're going to have your jewelry, of course, and you're going to have some way to display that jewelry and you're going to have some way to put that jewelry or something to put that jewelry in once you sell it. You can't just hand off a bracelet without putting it in a bag or a box or having it some way of handing it to the customers. So the other thing is kind of a check off list what to actually bring to the shows. So we've done tons of shows here at Potomac Beads and it's a uh, kind of evolved over the years of what to bring to the show thanks to technology and thanks to uh, having access basically to the internet even if you are not at a show that has that option. The number one thing that I want to mention is making sure that you do have a way to take payment that is more than just cash. Always think about the fact that people don't carry cash that much anymore. So you may want to look at a something that is phone compatible like Square and check out different options for payment via credit card or PayPal or something like that that people can easily do from their mobile device or with your mobile device to upsell and to make the sales happen. If you don't have a way people can pay, then they're not going to make the purchase. The other thing that you want to make sure that you have is a way to write down a contact list, whether or not you have a Facebook group group or email addresses or you're sending out something, make sure to have a place that people can write down their information. Now you don't need this on your table. You can have a nice little table basically underneath the table that has some of these different things like your extra scissors, some tape, some string that you may need, a little bit of putty to stick things to where they need to go, uh, extra pens, extra marker, you never know, an extra tablecloth just in case somebody sits something down on your table and you get a little stain or there's a spill. Um, also a little snack and a drink kept again under the table so that way it's not cluttering your table. So these are things that you want to think about ahead of time before even thinking about setting up your show. Do you have the way to take payment? Do you have change if you are taking cash? Do you have something to write down a receipt for the customer as well as a list that you can hand them usually on a clipboard that they can sign up so you, they can be contacted from you. So that way you can make hopefully a future sale to that same person. Do you also have something that you can write with? a marker in case you need to change any prices, extra price sheets, as well as you know cleaner things like a lint roller, um, a little bit of Windex if you need to clean any glass or any surface that you have. And then also a nice helpful thing is also having a mirror and glass that somebody can see what they're looking at. So I'm gonna go in and show you a bunch of these displays, but I wanted to keep in mind that all of those little things are great to keep in a box. And when you go to shows, you don't have to think about it every time. You can do a little double check or even have a check off sheet taped to the lid of the box. That's what I used to do. And make sure, check, do I have my markers? Do I have my scissors? Do I have my string to hang signs? Sometimes you get to shows or to fairs and things have changed and the display is not exactly the way that you thought it was going to be. There's a large column in the middle of your table or you're on an end and you actually have extra space. So think about those things as you're getting ready and setting up and getting packed for your shows. So going into the slideshow here, again, I want to thank those people that submitted the slideshow information and there are more pictures after we made this slideshow, more pictures started flooding in. So these are kind of the first wave of pictures that we saw. So check out the rest of them again on our Facebook group. So looking and checking out, here's a beautiful display that has a nice color range with that nice consistent turquoise color. The different models allow different uh, 
sections to be shown a little bit easier because there is height to the display and it's really not crowded. When it comes to Kat's designs here that she showed, just some of the ways and the different things that she uses. She uses different uh, necklace holders and bars to give her height, as well as stacking necklaces. So that way, if you're looking for pieces that may fit together, it may actually lead to another sale. Here in Teresa's photo, she has some of her designs in the display case, and this is minimalist to its finest. It shows different rewards to, or awards too that were given for the pieces and adds value to them in that glass display case. When it comes here to Tracy's design, she has that beautiful rain banner right center. You can't miss it, you can't be seen. And she actually has those nice stackable items right above the display table to raise the level of the actual display. When you're looking here for different options as far as necklace or bracelet designs, I actually think the favorite part of this is the actual use of the photo frame with the actual little kind of knobs on the side that the jewelry is hanging from in the left-hand corner. Here, she uses the beautiful idea of making a photo collage with the different pieces and hanging them to make them seem more substantial. There are cases and shows where you can hang items like this and that frees up table space. When you're looking here at this display, again, that signage is front and center on the signage and shows the information, the contact information, the different displays, and the different options as far as jewelry making. I love this display here by Carolyn Smith. It's that odd ball that it's a curved display. Amazing idea, amazing design with super simplistic. You can always put more jewelry or have more jewelry under the actual table. That one I absolutely love. This design here by Denise has a great height variance. So I love the busts. I love that natural color when you're looking at them. And because of the different heights of the busts, it really allows extra space without making the spot look cluttered. Also, her designs are all tagged. Tanner did a similar display here with that raised bar. This is a great idea of taking really thin paper, a really thin uh, package, or sorry, really thin uh, board and having it on that ladder display. Great for packaging as well too. Erica sells kits and she does an awesome job selling kits. And I love how she has the kits and the pictures already in boxes, making it easy to travel. One sample of each kit is sitting there to look at and play with, but then the kits are actually in the boxes with the pictures on it to make it easy to hand out. Barbara's design here kind of upcycles shutters to allow some height and again have that nice display and that nice actually photo right in the front of the business name and the business card. Here on the table for Mary's, she actually said when you're looking at it that there's a sale going on, that there's some sale information, and also what type of forms of payment she has. So Mary's has the different forms of payment that she's actually going to have here, and they have it as listed as those options. Here in Susie's display, you can see that it looks like she actually transports in some of these items as well too. So she has that nice box that she uses as part of her display. And I love the idea of the mirror, which Mary had in hers too, to allow customers to see the pieces on them. The, uh, the Bay House here design jewelry for Beta is great because it uses natural materials like stones to put the jewelry in and the picture frames are great, adding cork to them, allowing her to hang some more necklaces. Carolyn's photo here is kind of that display perfection that she has a great use of the shutters as well. She has created levels in her design, again, utilizing that table display and stuck with a black on the outside and brown on the inside here. Dina was happy to post that she did her first show and that this was her setup for her first craft show. I like that Dina's put her different designs together, that there's necklaces and bracelets and earrings kind of right on the table that are all together. That earring display allows extras and an earring display like Nadine's here gives that kind of highlight that these earrings are special. There's one pair hanging, it's nice and simplistic, and there's ways that you can do this just out of wire when you're looking at creating nice displays. Here in the display for Tamara, I love hers again, that she has basically the display case. You need to think about how you're transporting, how you're going to be working with the different designs and traveling with these pieces. 
The great thing about her design is that she can travel with us. Deborah's has the boxes that are gonna make it easy to transport and to have the pieces laying inside with the price on them so people don't have to ask. You can then take that box and put it right on top and then you have it ready to transport and go. For Emily's design here, again, she utilizes the shutters, and then she has the box transportation that she has that she can put jewelry inside, and she used it to raise the level. Also, I love the high bar of the necklace display at the top, which allows it to hang down. Irana has a great display here with these nice Christmas balls right in front of me hanging individually. It's not over cluttered, it's not overcrowded, and the turquoise along the black really makes it stand out. Again, bring a lint roller if you are going to use a black design, even like Jessica's here. Again, that height is really important when you are looking and getting into show. Keep it simple. I like that there's just one necklace on each bust here and that they are kind of laid out along the design. It allows you to have more on display and more shown. I love that Pam's design, each earring looks like it's individually put on a nice card that is special and unique to her. She also has a range here of the displays and gives that height with the earrings without, again, having to take them on and off for transport. She can just put them on. Alma has a great display that she uses nice natural material. She has that leather, which goes with her kind of cowboy beach country theme. She, set, she does lots of natural gemstones and went with that natural leather for the display. Again, there's so many things that are ideas. I would say the number one thing is to keep it not cluttered, to keep those boxes and the things on hand to give something into, and also to make it that when you're looking at it, you have that nice option to transport things, keeping them untangled, and think about how you can easily make your show easy to set up and take down. I love when you're sticking to one color and that you have that color range kind of displayed throughout a nice neutral or even a pop of color. Make sure that your signage is nice and clear and that also it's helpful to put what types and forms of payments that you do take. It doesn't need to be big on the sign or it doesn't need to be kind of overwhelming just to make people realize that you, as some vendors only take cash, may accept credit card, which I think is essential as well. The less clutter you have on the table, the better. Again, with that snack and idea, keep those under the table so that way you have something to keep you hydrated and you have a little snack, especially if it's a long show, but keep them under the table. Under the table space can really be utilized to put some of that display items that you may not actually be putting out. You can keep extra pieces of jewelry under the table so that way your display is not crowded, but then also when you sell something, you have something to replace on the piece of jewelry and display. Do not keep empty displays on the table or on your craft area. Once the piece sells, if you do not have a space for that and you do not have an extra piece, remove that from the actual table so that way your space still looks full and open and inviting. Make sure that there's a way for you to interact with your customer that's sitting across the table. If you have a huge high display and there's no way to get around it that you have other vendors on either side, you want to think about that so you're not cut off from the person looking and actually shopping for your jewelry. So think about easy accesses and ways into your display or a way to keep the center that you can actually be seen in the design. Again, thank you so much for all of those that did a great job in helping with that displays. There's something in every display picture that can strike up ideas, give you suggestions, and help to make you, again, a better beater and a better displayer of your craft. Whether or not you set up in your home for a home party, you go to actually judge shows or craft shows or carry things along, hopefully you found this Better Beater episode. Remember, the idea of these Better Beater episodes are to make you, in fact, a better beater, and I think helping and having some of these display ideas will actually help you to achieve those goals. Keep in mind, you can upcycle a lot of things, like Erica had that fun box that she also transports in and then uses on her display. We had a number of people use shutters down the sides. We had paper towel roll holders, as well as uh, soap dish holders, serving trays with pebbles in it. So think about, you don't need to spend a ton of money for your designs. Think outside the box, get creative, go see what they have at the dollar store, a little bit of spray paint, can go a long way. As always with these Better Beater episodes, hopefully again you learn something. Have fun beating and remember to, if you would like, join our Facebook community for beating and jewelry making to get more amazing designs. As always, if you need any materials to help you along the way, you can shop with us at potomacbeads.com as well as potomacbeads.eu.